There is one pleasure still within the reach of fallen mortality which owes even more than does music to the sentiment of seclusion. I mean the happiness experienced in the contemplation of natural scenery. In truth, the man who would behold or write the glory of God upon earth must in solitude behold that glory. I love indeed to regard the dark valleys, the gray rocks, the waters that silently smile, the forests that sigh in uneasy slumbers, and the proud, watchful mountains that look down upon the French countryside, so dear to me because I was born there, and which I had to leave very young when my tutor took me to North America after the strange death of my parents. Though I was never told how they met their fate, I got the impression that my mother's family accused my father of her death and caused him to be incarcerated in a madhouse. It was later verified that he died there. However, that is another story. Though I was not encouraged to return to the continent, I never lost an inherent craving to see my homeland again. Thus, once I finished my journalistic training, I made the acquaintance of an editor and persuaded him to send me to France to write a story on a sanatorium famous for its novel method of treating the mad. The rest was easy enough. I wrote to Julien Couvier, a former classmate, and asked him to accompany me on what I promised would be an interesting journey. What's come over you? There's a fallen tree across the road, sir. His strength is unbelievable. Yes, I've never known anyone stronger than he. Yes, sir. Is that the entrance to Dr. Meyer's hospital? Yes, it is. I'd like to visit the premises. Care to come with me? I don't think so. Mentally deranged people terrify me. To tell you the truth, I'm surprised to know that you have such peculiar inclinations. I don't be too hasty. The point is, my newspaper has heard of Dr. Meyer's method, and they've asked me to write an article. Is McIntosh still the editor? Yes. <laughs> that old fox. Après toi, ma chérie. Are you authorized to visit Dr. Maillard's domain? No, but I'm counting on you to make the introductions. Yes, I'll do it gladly. Dr. Maillard is a good friend, but I must let you know that he refuses to receive visitors. Oh, I understand, but I'm not an ordinary trespasser. I'm a reporter seeking information for his newspaper. All right, Leblanc. You know what you're doing. May I know what's holding us up, gentlemen? <laughs> Nothing, really. Don't worry. Are we ready to move on? Hurry up, Artie. the entrance to the sanatorium, sir. I wonder what's come over Meyer. He didn't used to have guards, armed guards. My name is Julien Couvier. I am the owner of the neighboring property, and I demand to see Dr. Meyer. <laughs> Well, what have you decided? May we or may we not go in? Obviously, it's more difficult to enter here than escape from Devil's Island. My friend, I can assure you that you will enter this dungeon.
so. Put your gun down, Timothy. <laughs> Welcome, Monsieur Cuvier. You damn fools. Why didn't you let Monsieur Cuvier's coach go through? <laughs> I hope you gentlemen will overlook the rudeness of my guards. They're not accustomed to dealing with people of your rank. Oh, you don't have to apologize, old boy. May we go through now? But of course, Timothy, go with the gentleman. Oh, don't worry. I know the way. I've been here many times, you know. Yes, but you understand. The director's orders. back the day after tomorrow. I would like you to meet her. I'll be very honored. She is an authentic museum piece, worthy of the pen of a journalist like yourself. I believe your cousin has become ill. Oh, it's just her nerves. I'm worried about her color. Let her rest. She'll be all right. <laughs> oh! oh. 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 <laughs> Damn it, Julia. Oh, 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 Lucifer, what a retro, Belzebub! Astaro, Asmodeus, what a retro! Baphomet, Belzegor, what a retro! Astaro, Behemoth! Ah, what a retro! Astaro, Lucifuge, what a retro! Ah, Asmodeus, Astaro, Agariale! Va di retro, Satanás, va di retro, Lucifer, va di retro. Oh, mon Dieu, mon Dieu. What was he shouting? The names of the devil, devil, devil. Please excuse me. I cannot accompany you any further under the circumstances. My card will suffice for Maillard to receive you. Regards to the doctor. Good luck, Gaston. Don't worry. I understand. I'll manage. Henri, hurry up, quick. Yeah. They ask Castle.
Then you'll tell the marshal the buzzards are here. Go. I'm Dr. Meyer. What can I do for you? I've uh, always wanted to visit your sanatorium, and I hope you won't mind. Oh. Cuvier's friends are my friends, too. Doctor, I'm very honored. And yet, you know, I have something very definite to hold against him. He has always refused to visit this haven. Well, the trouble is, he's so absent-minded. Yes. Come, come, follow me. We do indulge in a little pleasures here, Monsieur Leblanc. Indeed. By all means, nothing so enlightens the spirit as the constant pursuit of our whims and fancies, gourmet delights, aesthetic sounds. Even the folly of love should be encouraged. to interrupt such beautiful music, mademoiselle. Oh, never mind. I wasn't doing it very well. My dear, this is Monsieur Leblanc. He has decided to visit our simple home. Monsieur Leblanc, may I introduce my niece, Eugenie? Eugenie has three outstanding qualities. A gentle disposition, excellent digitation, and modesty beyond praise. And such fresh beauty. Please accept my honest admiration. Don't try to flatter me. I'm simply a music lover, a mere amateur. Primus, bring wine. Oh, oh. Come on, you Todd, you dog! Todd! Oh. Henri, let's go! to the palate. Are you fond of wine, my dear Leblanc? Very much indeed. Perhaps more than I should be. One more point we have in common. Do you mind if I retire? Not at all. You have my permission. You're like all young people, Leblanc. I beg your pardon? You, too, have become infatuated with my niece. But how can I blame you? It is so easy. Now I shall take you through the home over which I so humbly preside. Pray, follow me. Damn! 
This is part of my kingdom, Monsieur Leblanc, a paradise where everybody's a poet in his art. Here we successfully apply my soothing system. It allows untold opportunities for creation. Our patients are constantly working on their different inventions. Will you step up, please? Go! I don't think it'll rain today. That machine is called the Silks X Machina, a real marvel that can generate three storms in five minutes' time. It never works, but uh, it keeps them occupied, you know. <laughs> Poor devils. Pretty, isn't it? Last year, the Golden Mare was born, a compendium of all musical instruments known and unknown. I'm always touched to tears when I listen to her. A stone-aged lady curling like a thing that never will be known. Her eyes are drowned in the dotted danger of an idiot angel. To your right. And what? You know, Leblanc, I consider them all like my children, and this is their home, as much as it is my kingdom. A destra! I hope you enjoyed the ride. The horses were inspired by the way Englishmen have of working coal mines. <laughs> the people lodged in their chimney towers have such human warmth, and they pour energy in such quantities, such great quantities, that we use it in the heating system. Uh, there on your right. I had to visit several countries in order to choose them. Latins were the most rewarding because of the hot blood, I suppose. The incredible heat that we gather is later processed and crystallized uh, over there into a miraculous drug. This drug kills inactiveness and changes men to such an extent that they forget their aggressive nature. Oh, wonder of wonders, Monsieur Leblanc. And so, animal instinct is conquered by intelligence. But nothing so marvelous as that peculiar apparatus over there, Madame Chronophobia, better known as Electrubia. A fantastic machine which generates luminous matter. If all things go according to plan, it'll become an integral part of man's nervous system. A metallic womb uniting man to the universe. Burning snakes curling around the pillars of a new myth. Yes, Leblanc. A religion has just come out from the very bowels of an electric golem. The alchemist's dragon will now be crowned with a crux and sata, spitting luminous pyramids over its timeless temple. And those people that are now worshipping the crux and building the pyramids feed the mother larvae of this religion. The goddess from the future is now facing you. Will you dare question her? The Electro Sphinx, glaring hypnotically at her infants, breathing energy over her whole domain. Time and space will become her slaves. Air will be filled with silver chariots in which priests and priestesses shall sing their hymns with joy, overwhelming living creatures. receive a great number of visitors? No. Most visitors are injudicious persons who often arouse my patients to a dangerous frenzy. Well, some have even suffered crises and severe relapses. I see. And the new system is one of your own invention? Not altogether. Some portions of it are referable to Dr. Tarr, of whom you have necessarily heard. And again, there are modifications in my plan, which I am happy to acknowledge as belong of right to the celebrated Professor Feather. Uh, with whom, if I am not mistaken, you have the honor of an intimate acquaintance. 
I am quite ashamed to confess that I have never heard the name of either gentleman before. Good heavens. Well, I surely do not hear you are right. You did not intend to say that you had never heard either of the learned Dr. Todd or of the celebrated Professor Feather. I am forced to acknowledge my ignorance. But to tell you the truth, I am not acquainted with the works of these, no doubt, extraordinary men. Hmm. Well, as you will realize later on, we apply the system with loyalty and sincerity. Uh, we do our best to comply with every humanitarian argument, being guilty of neither too much optimism nor a defeatist pessimism. <laughs> you see, Monsieur Leblanc, there is no argument which so touches the feeble reason of the madman as the reductio ad absurdum. Do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Can you give me some examples, Doctor? Oh, definitely. Uh, Mr. Chicken? Mr. Chicken? <laughs> Mr. Chicken, would you come here, please? Look, 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 look. Mr. Chicken? Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Mr. Chicken? <laughs> Chicken thinks he's a chicken, and we overlook his antics. We only see the positive side of the problem. But if he rejected the idea of being a fowl, we would feed him corn for several months until he accepted it fully. Remarkable, Doctor. Oh, we work wonders here, LeBlanc. Incredible wonders. Here, eat hearty. Here, eat hearty. Eat hearty. <laughs> What else can you tell me of the soothing system? Well, we put much faith in amusements of a simple kind. Patients practice music, dancing, gymnastics. They play cards, read certain kind of books, and so on and so forth, and so on uh, and so forth. And as far as their affliction? Well, we pretend to cure ordinary ailments and never pronounce the word madness. <laughs> Let's hope it's not Mr. Chicken. <laughs> hey, give me a drink. I don't drink at all. <laughs> you want a drink? Yeah. No. Give it to me. Oh, you never let me drink. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, come on, give me a drink. <laughs> give come it on. to him. He's going to finish it. Come on, give it to me. Come on. Uh, hey, I only had a drink. <laughs> now we'll go down to the courtyard. Gladly. Ah, but not by the staircase, you know. We'll use the rope ladder. I must confess I'm rather clumsy at this type of sport. Ah, uh, strong emotions prevent madness. Fortunately, you're far from such an ailment. Follow Keep me, please. Ahoy! Keep ahoy! Oh! 
Look lively, Lieutenant, and hoist that line. Aye, sir. Stop playing, Marshal. <laughs> Show some respect to my guest. <laughs> oh. Please excuse Marshal Levine, but the bee doesn't harass someone. He catches chicken pox. And let it all be for the sake of the soothing system of Dr. Meillard. But let's stop these games. I'm not as simple or as innocent as that lamb. Here, you either enter into another conflict of nature or simply perish under the hands of a sick fantasy. Then, since I don't care to perish, <laughs> I'll have to enter your world to understand your system. Well, of course, my dear LeBlanc. You have behaved so admirably that you deserve to visit even the dungeons. Did you say dungeons, Doctor? Do you mean to tell me you chastise these poor devils? Come, come, let's not exaggerate. Now you will confirm the efficiency of my system. Uh, hold. And now as to the efficiency of your system. Ah, uh, the best and most effective as yet conceived by man. The soothing system of Dr. Meillard. My method, do you understand? labyrinth. Many were lost forever seeking a way out. Well, I don't plan to be one of them. Of course not, LeBlanc. Your missions at goals are not underground. Not that I imply they have to be superficial. <laughs> the more you say, the less I understand me. Uh, oh, a mere pun. I couldn't resist it, old fellow. Have confidence in me. We'll soon leave this rat. <laughs> Interesting beasts, rats, though sometimes they attack man. Stay close to me, LeBlanc. Filthy beasts! Back! Get back, you vermin! For goodness sake, Dante! I'd completely forgotten him. Stay by my side. You're about to witness something unique. Lasciate ogni speranza. Voi cantate. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. The very words Dante read when he entered Hades. Thou hast made me, and shall thy work decay? Repair me now, for now mine end doth haste. I run to death, and death meets me as fast, and all my pleasures are like yesterday. I dare not move my dim eyes anyway. Despair behind. Dante, do you hear me? Here's a piece of bread. Tomorrow you'll get some more. And death before doth cast such terror, and my feeble flesh doth waste by sin in it. Dr. Meillard, this surpasses every concept of cruelty. Blame it on the less soothing part of my soothing system, my friend. Come. Come. I think, Doctor, you're carrying this too far. Don't despair, LeBlanc. We'll soon leave this labyrinth. Come. Come. 
didn't come. You have not yet seen it all. I've seen enough to last me a lifetime, Ayar. But uh, this is the way out. Come, come. Eugenie. Excuse me. Wait. You have my permission to stay. Eugenie has devised various theories, all product of her clear mind. I'd be delighted to hear some of them. Well, I hope Eugenie's disposition... My disposition could not be better inclined, Uncle. We would indeed appreciate your telling us what you think of certain social habits. Are you referring to the indecent practice of people who prefer to rest rather than to dance? Precisely. And you could clear up what you mean for the benefit of our distinguished guest. You may start. Eugenie is delicate. Eugenie is imaginative. She is a young lady of unparalleled beauty, unusual modesty, who claims it is indecent to rest. There, the feet are the wings of dance. Action rots and gnaws at the root of the tree. It blinds the sailor. The sailor wins the wings. I am not at all familiar with this dance. It originated in some remote region of Java, which I visited many years ago. This very instant, after Eugenie's invocation, the sailor and the Boabab roots have fused. of the Boabab shall fall the leaves of the Ye and the Nay. Eugenie will have ceased to exist and the world will stop. Yet the cycle will start anew. The resurrection will take effect as the world itself inhabits the roots of the Boabab. system. It's time to retire.
Gaston. 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 Tonight, in the garden. Please be there. Gaston. I'm Dr. Meyer. What can I do for you? I'm Dr. Meyer. What can I do for you? I'm Dr. Meyer. What can I do for you? I'm Dr. Meyer. What can I do for you? I'm Dr. Meyer. Gaston. Dr. Meyer. What can I do? Tonight in the garden. Please be there, Gaston. Gaston. Speranza, voi che entrate. Let's hope it's not this chicken. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Slimy things did crawl with legs upon the slimy sea. About, about, in reel and rout, the death fires danced at night. The water, like a witch's oils, burnt green and blue and white. And some in dreams assured it were of the spirit that plagued us so. Nine fathom deep he had followed us from the land of mist and snow. Ah, well a day, what evil looks had I from old and young? Instead of the cross, the albatross about my neck was hung. Drought was withered at the root. We could not. No more than if we had been choked with soot. Monsieur Leblanc, do come in and sit down. I've asked you to sit down, and I'm not used to being disobeyed. Oh, I fully understand, my dear fellow. Your nerves are too weak for this type of amusement. Nobody, least of all I, can remain indifferent to a poor, innocent soul like Eugenie being treated with such cruelty. Eugenie, you say? Are you sure it was she? No doubt about it. Even so, no one may disrupt the discipline of this home. Dr. Meillard, bear in mind she's a woman. A soft, harmless creature who deserves special treatment. And Precisely. I... Eugenie must receive a special treatment. 
Can you imagine what would happen if she ran away from there to home? And the question comes from someone who knows it infinitely better than you do. Therefore, I must ask you to reconsider your chivalrous or foolhardy behavior. Well, you must understand how I... I know it's hard to believe. But when she's enraged, her fury is greater than that of a wild boar. You lie. You're merely an imposter. You wish to say I'm a Merlin imposter. And you're right. For me, Yar is a magician. And I'll prove it to you. Do you believe in sorcery? No. I insist you're an imposter. What's more, I can prove it. Hmm. Look at the wall and tell me how many shadows do you have? You say you have but one. You're wrong. You have three shadows. I forbid you to turn around. You have three shadows even if you refuse to believe me. Can you see them now, LeBlanc? There are three, precisely three. <laughs> and now tell me, do you or do you not believe in my power? It's time to go to bed, LeBlanc. Tomorrow you have an unusually difficult day. You'll visit the dungeons. Pleasant dreams, my friend. And if you hear strange noises during the night, fear not. For your shadows will protect you. Your shadows will watch over your sleep. <laughs> Eugenie, wake oh. up. Father. Eugenie, it's Father, me, Gaston. help me. Help me? No, it's Gaston. Father. Eugenie. Oh, Father, help me. Wake up. Help me. Would you? Help. Help. It'll be all right. Don't worry, my love. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've been seeking my father. We'll find him together, Eugenie. I'm convinced Maillard keeps him in the dungeons. Please, don't profane my father's name by using it when you speak of that madman. Forgive me, Eugenie. Oh, if only I could get my hands on that swine. You're a strong Gaston. But please believe me. His powers are immense. We are helpless before his evil. Oh, what are we to do? Have faith in me. He must have some weak spot. I wonder. He is that famous brigand, Ralph Fragonard. You've heard of him, haven't you? I have. But I thought he'd been sent to life imprisonment on Devil's Island. And escape with several criminals. He came to my father, the real Dr. Maillard. He came to him seeking a cure. My father thought he came to him seeking a cure. But God, how could he have deceived your father? As Fragonard is mad, he deceived him. A few months after his arrival here, he incited the other patients to revolt. He organized a coup d'etat, and several months after that, he supplanted my father. But we're together now, so don't worry. Second battalion, advance! You two, to the east. Front guard, to the west, attack. You, go up and circle. You, south. Up to now, I've been able to deceive Fragonard. He really thinks I am mad. But if we don't change the situation, I shall lose my mind. Gaston, we cannot stay here any longer. Here, you better wear this. It's cold. Oh, 
Help me. Help me. Help me. Help We'll soon be out of here. I am aiming precisely at your heart with my gun. Any false move on your part could prove to be fatal. Now, let's stop pretending. Talk to me, yeah, my dear fellow. Well, whatever your name is, what will become of Eugenie? Eugenie will get exactly what she deserves. Don't harm her, Fregonard. Please. One of the dictums of my system is uh, patients should never overexcite themselves. I'm not your patient. Of course not. For the time being, you must feel like one of the members of the family who lives in this humble abode. You are mad. Whether well, temporarily or for good is a matter to be decided uh, afterwards. Watch them closely, Leblanc. See that fellow over there? He pretends to be fishing for something. Don't ask me what. He is the essence of the impossible. She, the hopelessness of the unredeemable.
Welcome. Welcome to Maillard's table. Let the music commence. Beloved, rejoice with me in the company of my fine and elegant guests. And watch your table manners. Unfortunately, we cannot afford to have them all surrounding my majestic person. That's why some of them are kept within those crystal prisons. It was very easy. One day, the patients, inspired by me, rebelled. They locked up their torturers. And from that day on, the former patients of this institution became the missionaries of my system who will depart to preach my gospel. Bravo. Guards and patients traded roles. And, and the lunatics were set free and their keepers locked up in rotten dungeons. But your majesty, have there been no signs of counter-revolution? No, we're much too clever. In order to avoid any possible problems, we have refused to accept visitors, except in special instances. Those who did come are purging their recklessness in the dungeons. And others, where they belong. There have been a few cases similar to Eugenie's. But she never fooled us about her true reason for remaining here. And now, sir, do my answers seem satisfactory to you? Monstrum horrendum informe ingens. Get back! Get back! Uh, sit down, please. Sit down. Eat, my friends. Oh! Oh, look at him! <laughs> <laughs> blasphemy! Blasphemy! Arhum Garana Sapnan Sapnan Guruji Alhum 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 Garana Sapnan Sapnan Guruji could I offer you a piece of this most excellent veal at la saint Benhoud? No, thank you. Take it away. Dearly beloved subjects, now prepare yourselves for the entertainment that I will offer you. Now, my dear Monsieur Leblanc, if you are as clever as you think you are, tell me, what lies under the salary? Let him say it! Let him say it! Let him say it! Hush! Another veal on the saint -Menoul. Oh, no, you're stupid. Isn't he stupid, my friend? Yes, he's stupid! Yes, he's stupid! Yes, he's stupid! <laughs> I will be the one to show you. Uncover the secret that lies under the salary. <laughs> the 
gentlemen, there is your father. <laughs> you needn't be so cruel. Take off his gag. I don't see why not. Take his gag off. <laughs> Eugenie, my child. Let me look at you. Ah, my child. Oh, father, at last I found you. If I am to die, I'll die with you. Enough of this melodramatic foolishness. For today, many events will occur. Indeed, many an event worthy of the anger your mediocrity has aroused in my bosom. Yes, enough. Take him away. Interesting experience, Timothy. What exactly do you mean by an interesting experience? You were born to ask nothing but stupidities, LeBlanc. Don't you know who I am? I found out just today, Fregonard. Every single country, remote or near, those where the sun darkens the skin and those where the ice never melts will soon be mine. My power is boundless. I know the secret for submitting all men and women to my will, and you want me to disclose this secret. <laughs> None other than the soothing system applied to everyone. Nations of the world, proclaim me your emperor! Long live Fragonard! 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 Ah, dear Leblanc, my lovely Eugenie, what did you expect to gain by pretending to run away? Are you trying to break my heart? Don't you understand you belong to the chosen few with whom I will build a new world? My faithful and beloved people, once more we have witnessed an ingratitude, or rather a deliberate misunderstanding. They have not understood the advantages to be gained by my soothing system. They have not understood, sire. They, they have, have not understood. understood. They have not understood. They have not understood. Beloved people, it is up to you to decide on this regrettable case. To the dungeons! To the dungeons! There seems to be no other way. Perhaps after they have lived several years in a world of shadows, they will finally understand the price one pays for reckless action. But was this mere recklessness? Or rather, criminal rebellion? Do you hear me? Rebellion! Yes, rebellion! Rebellion! If it is rebellion, the dungeons are no adequate punishment for reckless action, yes. But since Monsieur Leblanc and my lovely Eugenie are rebellious subjects, by sending them to the dungeons, we will be gracing them, and this they do not deserve. Do they? No! No! no. 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 For fire purifies everything.
Avoid your sentence? Can we not appeal, have a new trial? May we simply not beg to be pardoned? Oh, not very likely. <laughs> but perhaps you might be relieved to know that sometimes we decide in favor of fouls. <laughs> it turns out to be more amusing. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, you'll find out presently. <laughs> you'll find out presently. 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 Silence! Keep quiet. I'm afraid we'll never escape from this nightmare. Trust in my father. Did you see? He's alive. He's alive. Beloved people, the time has come for us to feed our famished fowls. Hooray! 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 The show is about to begin. All together now, call our fowls. <laughs>
Sadhana, 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 Guruji, Sadhana, Sadhana. You haven't yet won, you miserable rebels! You haven't vanquished your emperor! I'll fight you traitors one by one or all of you at once! No, let me have it. We have several scores to settle. En garde! No, man to man. admit to the existence of two adverse elements striving to steal my soul. The one ruled by reason and related to the memory of events that occurred in my former life. The other, that world of shadows and doubt leading to my present condition, born in the recollection of violent events so recently experienced. Therefore, believe whatever you wish. For anything I say concerning the first stage, you may accept and trust or dismiss altogether whatever I may say about the last. Mm -hmm. 